Ready to go, Aria? Okay. How's that uh, loner body working out for you? Perfect. Let's go. So, in 1950, a mathematician named John Nash published a single page paper that would go on to revolutionize all of game theory. And when I say game theory, no, I don't mean just a bunch of Five Nights at Freddy's videos on YouTube. No, I mean the study of strategical decision making among rational actors. Now, those who study game theory do breathe some very rarefied air, to be sure. But I'm positive you already know who John Nash is. A Russell named Crow played him in the Oscar award-winning film A Beautiful Mind. And what he discovered is a possible solution to all games. And just about everything can be modeled as a game where you have some finite amount of people with finite numbers of decisions they can make to maximize their gains and minimize their losses. And to describe the true beauty of this beautiful mind and the idea it came up with, I have to keep driving. When you got places to get to fast, like me, you can model traffic as a game. So I'm trying to get to some destination as quickly as possible, and I have to take into account the actions of other drivers. So I'm gonna employ strategies that minimize my travel time, maximize my speed on the road, and take into account what everyone else is doing, assuming, again, according to game theory, that everyone else is acting rationally. Many times they're not acting rationally. Hey, I got an AI on board, you mother! Mollusk. Many times they don't act rationally. Circus animals. So if we really applied game theory to this situation, right, I would want to pick a lane or a road that I perceive as the fastest one and take that one to minimize my travel time. However, in this game, everyone else is employing the same strategy. Everyone is also playing the same game and they're not gonna help me get to my destination over their own more quickly. So I'm playing what game theorists call a non-cooperative game. So I may see a lane or road and then I may switch. Eventually, after all this switching, and I'm sure you felt this if you're a driver, eventually you will come to some point where you feel like you can't do any better, that switching strategies or lanes or roads won't actually increase your travel time anymore. Now, every other driver is also eventually gonna come to this strategic consensus, and now we've reached some kind of equilibrium point in traffic where no one is doing any better and no one's switching strategies. What's interesting about this point is that just John Nash proved that every game with a finite number of people making a finite number of decisions has this equilibrium solution. And it's now called a Nash equilibrium. And the identification of this unique solution to any game under these conditions earned John Nash a Nobel Prize in 1994. A beautiful mind indeed. I will eat your face, you Nimbus! Got a feel for your loner body yet? Okay, good, because it's rock, paper, scissors time. Now, try playing rock, paper, scissors more than once, more than twice, more than three out of five times, or whatever you do to determine with your spouse who needs to give the kids a talk. Now, at the beginning, you might feel kind of tricksy. You might feel like you're trying to anticipate your opponent or implying a certain strategy, but eventually you'll notice that you'll kind of settle on a more random strategy where both you and the opponent are winning the same number of games on average and neither of you will switch from your strategy. And guess what? We've just hit upon another Nash equilibrium point where all the players in the game are getting the best result given the situation of the game. But best doesn't necessarily mean best. I'll explain in the car. A Nash equilibrium point is the point at which all the players of a game are happy with their decision and their strategy. But happy or best, the best lane of traffic to be in for your speed or the most number of games won during rock, paper, scissors, that's not necessarily the optimal choice for any one game or situation. So let's get technical with traffic again. Consider a simple road map like this, a classic Nash equilibrium design. Imagine a bunch of cars and they all want to get from point A to point D. They have three choices. They can either take the roads on the top or bottom of this diagram, or they can take both with a shortcut in between. 
Roads A, B, and C, D will change in speed depending on how many cars are on those roads. The other travel times stay the same. At the start, everyone would choose the fastest paths, right? But as everyone does that, the roads get congested. Now some drivers looking to save time start taking the shortcut, but then that path would become congested too. Eventually, all the drivers settle on a path and a Nash equilibrium will form. Now here's the weird part. If you put numbers to this, you find that a traffic pattern like this is actually faster when you remove the shortcut. The average travel time for each driver goes down. We've now turned onto a street called Watch where you're going, you melted popsicle! We've now turned onto a street called Braces Paradox. It's a counterintuitive situation where, in some network, if you remove part of that network, it actually speeds up rather than slows down. And there's evidence for this paradox, not just in traffic like I'm in now, but also in electrical systems with electrons and their preference for the path of least resistance, and in biology with some papers suggesting removing parts of food webs in order to save the food web as a whole rather than make making it collapse. And the cool thing is, if you haven't already gotten it, speaking of biology, Nash equilibria are also in another beautiful idea from a beautiful mind. Evolution. Let's pull over at that park. I want to see some trees. Y'all need to be thinking about trees more often. The true beauty of evolution, at least to me, is that the entire process is blind. Billions of years of trial and error supplied by random mutation and curtailed into creatures by environmental pressures. All of that can produce fungus, you, me, snakes, Kevin, whales, Kevin, you, me. And even though evolution is blind in this way, that doesn't mean that life as a whole will just jump onto any old evolutionary road any chance it gets. As evolutionary processes proceed, it is bound to hit upon some strategies that are more successful than others. And you could model nature as a grand game, some finite number of organisms with some finite number of decisions, and therefore, at some point, they would settle upon some strategy as a way of living as an organism on this planet that is an evolutionarily stable strategy. Something that, over time, is stable enough such that no random mutations would make their way into the population and be very successful. Now, a textbook example of the- wait. Wait, where, wait, where are you going? Wait, 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 come back. I'm not gonna give you a textbook to read. I made your body way too fast. I'm not gonna give you a textbook to read, I'm just gonna give you a textbook example. So think of a population of birds, and inside of that population there are two different strategies. We'll call it hawk and dove strategy. The hawks are really aggressive, they fight each other, and they steal food. The doves are really docile, and they're just chill, and they're just like doing their thing. Now, if every bird in the population was a hawk, that wouldn't be advantageous because they'd harm each other, and they'd be stealing their food, and they wouldn't thrive. And if everyone was a dove in that population, it would be very easy for a mutant hawk to arise genetically in the population and kind of take things over. So what you find in real populations of organisms, not just birds, is some balance percentage-wise of evolutionarily stable strategies, and it makes the whole thing impervious to mutants, like power armor does if, if you're from the Brotherhood of Steel. I don't know why I said that. Let's sit down before we go. An evolutionarily stable strategy that you're likely much more familiar with is the sex differences in human populations. So it just so happens that a stable strategy for the human race is to have roughly 50% ladies and 50% dudes, such that any mutant human arising in the population that had sex percentages way skewed in either direction just wouldn't be successful. Now, I brought up all of that biology just to make this single point. ESS's, evolutionarily stable strategies, are actually Nash equilibrium points. They're a subset of Nash equilibria. What makes Nash's idea so beautiful is that you find it everywhere, not just in biology or traffic or rock, paper, scissors, but game theorists use the idea to study auctions, arms races, wars, marketing, even making the correct penalty kick decisions in soccer. This wide application is why one of Nash's colleagues described the discovery of this idea in the New York Times in his obituary as analogous to the discovery of the structure of DNA. 
a beautiful mind indeed. Until next time. If that guy's still on the road when we get there, I'm gonna strap him to a baby centrifuge or something. Now exiting the facility. Thank you so much to the very nerdy staff at the facility for their direct and substantial support in the creation of this very video. Today especially, I want to recognize research assistant Mike Carr and visiting scholar Alan J. Early. If you want to join the facility, get on the staff and join the nearly 1,200 other nerds who are giving me episode ideas on Discord, talking with me in members-only live streams, showing me videos of their pet tarantulas, you can go to patreon.com slash kylehill and get on the staff today. Get your lab coat, get in, get nerdy. And if you support the facility just enough, you get your name on Aria here each and every week. And as you can see, there's literally hundreds of you, so I have no idea how I'm going to pass the time. In fact, I'm... What? What do you... No. I've only been parked here for like five minutes. So where do I go to pick it up then? Thanks for watching. I gotta go to the DMV.